What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to another Football Manager video. Today we're going to be having a look at a general tactics overview. This is a video that I have done a few times over the years of playing Football Manager and I do feel like it's a really useful one just to recap at the start of every new game cycle. Today we're going to be looking at creating a tactic from scratch, how I go about selecting a system to play with, uh, a team that I'm taking over. Um, hopefully there's some stuff in here for more veteran players but this is a slightly you know newer player focus but regardless yeah let me know what you make of this if you have any questions about stuff i raise please do let me know and uh, one thing i would really like to stress just before we get into this is football manager is a game where there isn't really a right or wrong way to play today i'm going to be showing you how i find success but much like in real world football there is you know not a, a singular way to play the game so if you look at this stuff you apply it doesn't work for you or maybe you look at it and go it's too different to what i do um I appreciate that and that's absolutely fine but anyway enough rambling away let's talk about the first thing that I like to do and that is come over to the team page and have a look at my player report so I load up the report to you here and I will just start by sorting by current ability and really what I'm looking for here is the pillars to build a team around you know looking at the pieces that we have this squad is a big jigsaw puzzle for this example we're using Dortmund which is obviously a team that many of you will be familiar with myself included um, I will say now I'm not going into this having worked out how I'm going to play that is kind of the point in this video to do it on the fly. But anyway, we can see here a list of players' best positions. You can, of course, customise the view, insert stuff yourself. So I'm actually going to put in a position here as well as best position, just because, as you can see, the likes of Royce and Julian Brandt, they have a number of positions that they can play. Um, the big kind of standout thing here is that we have Hummels, who's a very good ball-playing defender. We've got two very talented, you know, attacking midfielders in Julian Brandt and also Marco Royce. And behind them, we've also got players like Alcacer and Goethe, who we really want to make use of, and Witzel. So immediately we've got a, we've got Goethe as an advanced playmaker, potentially. We've got Witzel as a centre mid, and we've got two wide players and a singular striker. So immediately in my head, I've got a rough idea for some formations that would work here and I guess the obvious one is going to be a 4-2-3-1. So what I like to do to begin with is obviously click on create our own style here. I will say now there is absolutely no harm in doing a style yourself. If you want to do that um, and pick an existing one and modify it, I it's fine i feel like uh, for the sake of working out how i want to play however i like to just you know start with a clean sh slate as it literally says here so anyway the first thing we're going to do uh, is have a look at our team report so if we come to this tab here you can see we have our team report in terms of the history um, once you've played a few games information will be shown here um, in terms of your performance usually there's some useful stuff that will hint at where your tactic might be failing so keep an eye on that of course today we're just focusing on picking a tactic to begin with so you can see here, because we set up a 4 3 one the formation on the squad depth page shows a 4 3 one But if we do a go over here and click all positions, we can start to get a nice little overview of our team. Um, so looking at it, Dortmund have a very, very deep squad. Looks like we've got some pretty good fullback options. Between uh, Akanji and Hummels, we've got two good centre-backs, but we're perhaps lacking a little bit of quality behind them. So immediately I'm thinking probably a two centre-back formation. We've got uh, Piszczek out on the right-back position as well as Hakimi who can play out there. And on the left, we've got Schultz and uh, Guerrero. So, yeah, now that I think about it, 4 2 3 1 is almost certainly the way I want to play. So, this can be really useful just to get a rough overview of things. I do feel like this screen in particular is criminally underrated if you're someone getting into Football Manager for the first time. Um, you can really utilize this. Obviously, um, star ratings aren't gospel, they are a kind of basically the opinion of various staff members. And of course, it is judging player ability and potential that is going to play into that. So, if you're in a smaller club with a not so good assistant manager, do bear in mind star ratings not always accurate I really recommend using your own judgment again this is an example of where perhaps being familiar with the squad that you're taking over is a nice thing anyway you can see here we obviously have stats and facts which is all you know useful stuff as things go on but actually the really good thing that I like to look at um, if we just come to the assistant report is the team's strengths and weaknesses because we can get a rough idea of how we might want to play so you can see here we've got really good off the ball movement and good flair acceleration and stamina uh, our dribbling and passing is very good so perhaps a passing style of play is something to look into the vision in the squad is good and technically we're good so immediately I'm thinking we've got to play on the front foot we're probably going to be better with the ball at our feet um, although we have crossing as a strength here in our team it's worth noting that heading is one of our big areas of weakness 
quickness. We have quite a lot of smaller players. So for that reason, I'm thinking, you know, playing technical, keeping the ball on the floor is the way to go. You can see in terms of goalkeeping, we might be lacking a little bit of the throwing. Now, we have Hummels, who we know is probably going to be a ball-playing defender. So maybe we would want to look at the goalkeeper. We can have a look at that in a second. Uh, of course, if a goalkeeper's playing it short out to the defenders and isn't playing as kind of a sweeper keeper, he's actively involved in build-up play. Um, I'm not too concerned about the likes of his kicking and throwing and his overall distribution. You can see here our aggression isn't particularly good, nor is our bravery. So going into crunching tackles really isn't going to be something for us. And of course, there is some other information here that you could use to help you, you know, decide what signings you might want to make. So anyway, we've got a rough idea in our head of how we want to play here. So let's take a stab at things, shall we? So the first thing I'm going to do is look at Royce, who is our star player. Now, you can see here he is natural in a variety of positions. He's a right footed player who looks like he's pretty well suited to play out on the left. So... To start with, we're going to put him into our left midfielder position. Worth noting at this point, we've not actually selected any roles or instructions to the team just yet. What I like to do is kind of build a team, assess weaknesses as we go. Next, we've got Hummels, who, as you can see here, is a right-footed centre-back. I am one of those people who likes to have a right-footed centre-back at defensive right mid. Oh, sorry, centre, defensive right, you know, the right centre-back, essentially. Um, I know that some people, they're not bothered about what footedness their defenders are. If I can have a left-footed player on the left and a right-footed player on the right it's just kind of how I like to do things anyway we have Julian Brandt here who is considered you know another one of our big star players a new signing at Dortmund in real life um, he is of course not going to be able to play his preferred position out on the left but you can see here when we look at things he can play out on the right now he's not super super comfortable with it so maybe immediately here I would change the training to be out on the right as a winger you can see when we highlight the attributes key for this role he's pretty well suited to playing on the right wing his crossing's lacking a little bit so perhaps I'd want to look at improving that. Uh, you can see if we look at the individual training focus this year in FM20, there is some new stuff here, including aerial, which is heading and bravery. That is really, really useful. I also love the fact that when you mouse over these now, it shows what each thing does. So yes, Brandt, you're going to be playing out on the right. You're going to be playing on your stronger right foot. You're going to have to put in crosses. Fortunately, of course, he is only 23. So he's hopefully going to be able to develop and do that role for us in our team. So, uh, yeah, let's make sure we do put him out on the right-hand side. Now we come to Alcacer. Um, obviously, we like a little bit in the aerial department, although Alcacer himself has 15 heading. Jumping reach is a little bit questionable, and, uh, well, he is the standout striker in our team. If we just do a quick comparison, you can see behind him, striker-wise, Falken, Hazard, Royce, and Goethe, other players are really in contention. That debatably makes this an area that I really want to address. So, uh, with that in mind, let's put him into the striking position. We then have Mario Goetze, who, uh, just to save time, we're going to put in the playmaker position. And, uh, well, you can already see kind of things taking shape here, of course. We're, we've not decided on the roles we're going to play just yet, because I want to cover that in just a second. Witzel is going to play in the centre. Akanji, uh, if we look here, he is either footed so that is excellent news for our whole philosophy of playing with a left-footed centre-back. Also worth noting, you can see here, he's got 13 passing and pretty good vision, so a ball-playing defender is definitely something we could do with him. And again, that might play into the mindset of playing, you know, quite a passing style of play. You can see looking through player-preferred roles, um, we've got the likes of Goetze, obviously as a playmaker, Witzel, good little deep line playmaker. These are all players who are exceptional with the ball at their feet, and we really should make use of that. Anyway, we're going to pick Schulz to play out on the left. Uh, in terms of right backs, um, we might have a little bit of a gap in the team here, so perhaps this would be somewhere to look at signing a new player, but for now, we'll put in Hakimi. Uh, in the centre mid department, we could put in Dahoud, and I think we will for now, but... Just worth bearing in mind, centre midfield is really, really important in terms of overall balance. Of course, if you wish, you can select players from this screen here. Um, it's force of habit. I always like just selecting them from the uh, the team selection page. I have no idea why. Anyway, because we've got the analysis option ticked here, um, you can see we've got all these kind of things flagged. So we can kind of see lots of different problems we have. And if we click here, it can tell us the issues at hand. And this is really, really useful for understanding the balancing of roles. Um, so what we're going to do here now is think about the roles that we want to put our key players in. 
We talked about Royce. Um, we could potentially play him as an inside forward. Of course, he is right-footed, so it makes sense, in my opinion, to put him in a role that cuts in onto his stronger foot. Of course, the inside forward is a role or the inverted winger. In terms of these two roles, imagine the inverted winger more like a Mares kind of player, whereas your inside forward is going to play off the front man, off the striker, um, and really you know, get up the pitch. I'm thinking with how we're approaching things here, inside forward is probably the way to go. Um, I do want to stress, that, actually, at this point, a prime example of why star ratings aren't important well they're important but don't let them be the be all or end all is because Jaden Sancho is not in our team as things stand now he is a right footed player who is probably competing with Brandt in the right hand side of midfield so if we do a comparison of the two players here we can um, actually look at directly how their attributes fare for playing out on the right hand side as a winger which I think is the role we're going to go with here so if we highlight it we can see a direct comparison head to head they both excel in slightly different ways um, in terms of which I'm going to go with here um, I think I might go with Sancho just because he's got that slightly better crossing and uh, well despite his overall passing not being so good he has got that really good kind of physical pace that is slightly edging out Brandt so perhaps with a degree of English bias in there I'm actually going to change the team here and again you will find that as you fit players into your team into your system you need to reflect on things you know we looked originally Brandt ideal to play out on the left we decided actually because we've got Royce there he's got to move on to the right and in doing so actually we have another right midfield option who whilst doesn't necessarily have as good a star ratings is a player who I think can do the role in our system that little bit better Anyway, let's think about our, more of our roles here. I like to build from the front backwards, and the reason I do that is because there's way more role options higher up the pitch, and I feel like this really determines how you play. So we can look at Alcacer here. Um, his kind of, I guess, ability at different roles, you can see here, is quite varied. He could play as a poacher. I feel like because he's spearheading the attack, we want to keep him on the advanced forward role. It's worth noting that with the role suitability that you see here, this is based off a player's um, regularity playing a position as well as, to a degree, how well their attributes suit that role. So, for example, for Alcacer here, we could put his training on advanced forward, and over a period of time, he would get more and more comfortable at it to a point where he you know, can play it as naturally as he can play poacher. Um, it's really important when you pick player roles to kind of look at the overall system for example, with our centre mids here, I could look at Witzel and Tahoud and be really determined just to fill it in the circles, yellow everywhere. But in reality, does it make sense to have two advanced playmakers next to each other? Probably not. And additionally, you've really got to think about pairings. I feel like the centre midfield partnership in terms of roles is the most important thing. You want to have two roles or three roles if you play three centre mids that really work together and that comes with a little bit of time a little bit of experimentation finding out what works within your actual system for us here i'm gonna go with i think witzel as the defensive option to who is quite a creative player as well as witzel i don't really want to play them both as playmakers with gertz higher up the pitch for to if we look at him he's a good player but he's not particularly great in anything other than as a pure out and out playmaker he's got good work rate and stamina which might lead him to be a good box to box midfielder down the line being only 23 but for me personally he's just lacking in a few little areas you know I want him to be a bit more of an enforcer I want him to be in the core of our side alongside Witzel so for that reason I might look to drop him out and then we can look at various other options we've got Weigel could be an option um, that we look at so if we look at him here He's a pretty good centre mid option, a little bit more defensive. Uh, worth noting that you could pick, uh, decide the role before picking a player. So I might go, uh, I don't know, I want a centre mid on defend alongside Witzel, who actually I've decided deep line playmaker on support is the way to go. Um, I feel like advanced playmakers and deep line playmakers can work together. I feel like having two of the same kind of defeats the point. You know, these two players are going to be involved in different phases of the play, so it's okay in my opinion. Again, some people will happily play two of the same playmaker role in a team. Um, it's just how you want to approach the game isn't it but now that we've set it to centre mid defend and we've kind of got roles that we look at if we were now to click on the Weigl drop down you can see it would list the players in our team sorted by their role suitability who can play this position and suddenly maybe Thomas Delaney comes into the picture you can see here he has crazy mentals great stamina and actually he's quite good in the air and quite good in the tackle so I might decide he's a little bit better I might decide I want to try a ball winning midfielder instead 
You can see here we then get a major issue noted. And I think the issue with this is going to be, because we're not playing with a defensive midfielder, um, you know, sat in the defensive midfielder position, and because these guys are both on support, they will get up the pitch together. And this is where it becomes a big balancing act. Now, in previous FMs before FM19, this would be a little bit of a guessing game. You can use these analysis prompts just to give you, you know, a better idea of what you can and can't do. Um, generally, if there's like an amber warning behind Witzel here, I become a little bit less worried because I know that alongside him, there is a good defensive midfielding option here. Anyway, at the back, obviously, your role choice is a little bit more limited. I feel like when it comes to defender roles, pick roles that suit the system that you want to play. Because we know that we're going to be doing a passing style of play, um, we're going to stick with the two ball-playing defenders. That makes absolute sense to me. You know, as we discussed, we want to play... Um, out from the back, you know, pass it short with our keeper and build the play up the field. Um, Wingbacks, again, they are something that you need to think about with the roles. Um, I tend not to put my fullbacks on attacking duties unless I'm going to have a defensive midfielder as a rule of thumb or if I'm playing free at the back. But with Schulz and Hakimi here, looking at the roles we have ahead, especially in Schulz's case, I probably do want him to get higher up the pitch. You can see here he's a player who does have the ability going forward. He's got great crossing and really good physicals and really good work rate. So I'm not as concerned about him getting out of position. So for that reason, I might decide to play him on fullback attack. Hakimi, on the other hand, a little bit more defensive, not quite as good in the crossing. You can see here he's not the craziest in terms of defensive options. The other player that we have in this area of the pitch, of course, is Piszczek, who if we look at is a, I want to say, a more conventional fullback of sorts. He's not got crazy acceleration. His stamina and work rate, whilst good, aren't to the same level as, say, Schulz. And so I might instead decide to play him on fullback on support or fullback on defend. I feel like with the way that we're playing, support is probably a pretty good route to go. Of course, with Schulz playing on attack here, it makes sense to have Delaney at left centre mid, being that more defensive option. Um, you know, if perhaps Piszczek was the player getting forward, I might swap my two centre mids around so that the defensive midfielder can cover behind the fullback when he gets forward. Again, you kind of have to think of things as just a big jigsaw puzzle. Anyway, uh, Berkey here, we have two options. Um, you could perhaps put him on sweeper keeper on support and indeed with us playing our passing style of play, I might decide that's the thing for us. He's got pretty good kicking. His first touch isn't too bad. His composure is very good, so he should be okay on the ball even if he hasn't got, you know, the pure ability. And uh, you can see here, actually, his throwing is very, very good. So although the team report said, hey, goalkeepers aren't that great at throwing, that was looking at an average across all the goalkeepers in our squad. When it comes to our starting goalkeeper, actually, it's one of his big strengths. So it makes absolute sense, in my opinion, to have a goalkeeper who's not afraid of distribution. Anyway, now we come to mentality, in possession, in transition, and out of position instructions. Mentality, I feel like, play it safe, be sensible. I feel like I would never start very attacking, and unless I'm massive, massive underdogs, I'd never stop, start very defensive. For me, those are two extremes on a kind of scale which you're going to use during matches, either to desperately chase a goal or perhaps to play on the, you know, a more patient style of play. I think for us, we're going to play positive. Of course, you can read the descriptions that the game gives here, um, but we want to hold on to the play. We want to control matches, and that's exactly what we're going to try and do with our players here. When it comes to in possession, we have some very, very good wide players, and we also have, obviously, um, you know, fullbacks who can get forward. Particularly at, on the left-hand side of the pitch, we might want to tell our left-back to overlap uh, in terms of width, we probably want to make the pitch as big as possible. Um, we are going to have runs coming in from our centre midfielder, potentially Witzel, but also Delaney when the time's right. And so stretching the play as wide as we can is going to open up channels of space, particularly for Goethe to operate in. If we start playing super narrow and Sancho and Royce are tucking in tight, Goethe is just not going to have the space to roam in. And given the fact that he has you know, very, very good passing, very good teamwork and great decision making, I really want to make him the heartbeat of our team here at Dortmund. So, with that in mind, we're going to try and play a little bit wider. When it comes to the final third, obviously you can pick different types of crossing here. Crossing in FM20 is better than it was in FM19. I know a lot of crosses got blocked last year, at least from my alpha experience that I've had. Um, you know, the crossing uh, is better. I think with us, we know that Alka says jumping isn't the greatest. Yes, he's good at heading, but he's the only player in the box. Low crosses is probably the way to go. We know that jumping is a weakness in our side. Uh, in terms of crossing... Probably not worth doing, especially we're playing a single striker. He's going to be the only player in the box to aim for, but we might want to look to work the ball into the box. You know, with the style of play we're playing, there's going to be players running from deep. You know, we're going to have um, Royce getting into the box. Sancho will get forward. Goetze will get into the box as well. And um, 
we need to afford them time to get there. There is no point in building the play up, pumping it into the box really quickly if when, once we've just got the ball, if we're not allowing those players to get into position. So for that reason, obviously, we are going to go with work ball into the box. In terms of passing, uh, I'm going to keep things short and I'm going to keep things lower. I want to hold on to the ball here. We know that we're very good in possession because we lack that aggressiveness, that hunger to get the ball. It's always going to cause us problems. So, yeah, we're going to play things slow. Obviously, you've got a few other options here. If you're a very, very good team, be more expressive can be good. If you're a team in the lower leagues, be a bit more disciplined can be quite good, particularly if you're tailoring your style of play to really cover some of your squad's weakness. You know, if you're a team who, uh, I don't know, you, you have um, two very good defensive midfielders and you want them to work together and be the rock in your team. Maybe telling them to be more disciplined so they don't get up the pitch might be a good little option. Obviously, this hasn't changed a great deal since the last tactical overhaul, which was in FM19. Anyway, in terms of in transition, it's very similar to before. Uh, worth noting, actually, if you have either play the ball out of defence, which I should have ticked, or indeed distribute to centre-backs, that will cause on-goal kicks this year, your, goal, uh, your defenders to come into the box. Of course, the laws of football in terms of goal kicks have changed now, where defenders can start in the box on goal kicks. Those two instructions uh, are ways that you can achieve that in-game. In terms of how we're going to approach things here, although we don't have the most aggressive of squads, I would quite like to counter-press. You know, I want to hold on to the ball and I really want to suffocate the opposition team. So when we're pushing high up the pitch, um, it's in our interest to press and, you know, limit that space that we give them. I want, if we're going to give up the ball, I want to be giving it up in their half and I want to be winning it back quickly. I want to press them. I want to put them under pressure. We have some players with a very good work rate, very good pace and acceleration. They are going to close that gap. And even if they're not the most aggressive in terms of uh, putting in a tackle, per se, if a team's pressing, you can do it two ways. You can press individuals to win the ball by tackling, or you can press the passing lanes to limit the passing options and force the opposition to go long. You know, if they're hump hoofing the ball at the pitch to their striker, they're going to struggle. And if you can suffocate their, you know, passing options when they do win the ball in their own half, it's obviously very, very good. You've still got when ha you have possession one, you can either counter or hold shape. Uh, obviously, hold shape might be good in a game where you're more reserved. You don't want to overcommit men forward. It can be quite easy for players to get a little bit carried away when the ball's won and go bombing up the pitch, particularly your fullbacks on either side. If they are on attacking duty, hold shape can be kind of useful just to make sure they don't get caught out of position if you quickly lose the ball. Uh, for goalkeeper, obviously, a few options there that you might want to make use of. Uh, what I tend to do is, obviously, you're allowed three tactical presets. I'll have my base tactical preset, and then I'll have a more defensive option and a more attacking option that I can switch to in-game. Um, we'll cover that a little bit, I think, in this video, but stuff like um, you know possession approach and also the keeper in possession are stuff that I'd probably tailor for the more attacking and defensive variants of the tactical style we're making. Anyway, out of possession, as I said, I I want to press high up the pitch. We've got reasonably pacey centre-backs and we also have quite good technically centre-backs and uh, with us also having VAR, it makes sense to actually play an offside trap. So we're going to make sure we do that. Of course, it is worth noting that in Football Manager, the linesman can be wrong and if you're playing in a league without VAR, that can cause errors. Of course, if you are playing in the lower leagues where you don't have VAR equally, defenders might not have that degree of communication, which means they can pull off an offside trap. So I wouldn't go too crazy using this, particularly if you're in the lower leagues. Of course, as I said, I want to press high. I want to win the ball. And when we do win the ball, I want to cut the passing lanes. So we're not going to have use tied to marking because we've not got the aggressiveness to put in a tackle, but I think we have the ability to get players into positions to intercept balls or at least you know, cause defenders to just lo uh, lump it long into safety. We're a big team here in the Bundesliga, so it makes absolute sense to you know really go for teams' throats and go super attacking, hold on to the ball when we can, and due to our kind of lack of aggressiveness and some defensive ability, you know, really kind of stick to what works for us. And that is the most important thing, I think, about creating a tactic from scratch is play to your strengths. Make sure that your few best players, in my case, the likes of Goethe, Royce, make sure they're playing their best roles, roles that they have really good attributes for. If you have to plug in, you know, other positions in your team with not so good players in order to make that overall balance work, that's absolutely fine. You know, that is a compromise to be made. And obviously, over years of managing a team, you'd hope that you can bring in the exact players you want to fill those lesser roles in the system. So anyway, we've kind of gone through things here in terms of, you know, how I would approach a tactic. As I said, um, you might want to export this and make a more defensive and attacking option. So one, what you can do here is you can save a tactic. We might just call it 
the generic name um, you can then load that tactic and we might go right we're going to make a more defensive option here this is going to be for in games where we want to be more defensive so maybe we're holding on to a league maybe lead maybe we're playing in europe away from home so it might be a case of actually i want to be more defensive royce i need you to play on the support duty i'm really sorry Maybe you decide, actually, I want to crowd out the centre of the midfield. So although, Gertz, uh, I know that you can't play in the centre of the midfield as well. You know, you're only accomplished there rather than natural. It's the job you've got to do for us. And maybe Schulz as well and Piszczek, you say, uh, need, need you to hold position. And of course, as I mentioned, um, you can then adjust things. So we might not want to overlap on the left. We might not want to play out the back. You know, if we're on the back foot, it might be more important to get the ball out of our half rather than try and build from the back. And out of possession and also in transition, you might change things, you know, slowing the pace down. Um, you do have the instruction here to time waste. You could even, you know, completely change the system. Maybe you stick Royce up front and play Sancho on his own at centre attacking mid, for example. Um, obviously, completely depending on your team, things are going to vary. And of course, you can do the exact opposite for being more attacking. So again, if we load the system here, we might go, this is for when we are desperately chasing games and I need to get men into the box. And it might be a case of actually, we'd switch for 4 2 4 and Brandt, who is waiting in the wings for his moment to shine, comes on off the bench um, to play out on the left-hand side. We play Royce alongside Alcacer. You can see here, actually, Royce really isn't the best striking option, so maybe that was something we would look to train him in. Um, but, you know, this is a roll of the dice formation. You know, ball-playing defenders are kind of okay. People make the mistake of ball-playing defenders being players who, you know, mess around with the ball at the back. Actually, they look for penetrating passes going forward a lot of the time as well as just playing it around the back. Definitely worth considering. Obviously, we could look for the overlap. Might not want to work the ball into the box anymore. Maybe we want to shoot on sight. Uh, we might need to go more direct and up the tempo of our play. Uh, perhaps we want to be more expressive. You can kind of see how things work here. And through experimentation, you know, during your first preseason, you can try out these tactics, work out where vulnerabilities might be. Um, of course, if you have, say, Delaney get injured, it might be a case of, oh, actually, now we need to change things. How, how are we going to make this work? So if we look at things here, um, and I'm going to now need to find Delaney again in our team, but um, say he, Delaney gets injured, we bring in Dahoud. He's not that great in the defensive midfielder department, so what I might need to do is I might need to swap him and Witzel around, and I might decide, actually, rather than a deep line playmaker, I'll play Dahoud on advanced playmaker and Goethe on attacking midfielder instead. You know, you kind of have to have these plans in your head for how you might have to adapt things on the fly. Anyway, I appreciate this is a lot of information to digest. This was a completely unscripted video. One of the last ones I'm doing as part of the Alpha Capture event for FM20 that I was invited to by Sports Interactive. I do want to say a massive thank you to them for giving me this opportunity. I do hope this video was useful. Maybe you can apply some of this to your own game, be it in FM20 at launch, or if you're playing an older FM game, of course, in that. If you've got any comments or criticisms or any thoughts at all regarding what I've said today, feel free to leave it down below. Your response, your feedback is always massive massively appreciated if you are new to the channel of course do subscribe if there's stuff in this video you'd like to see me go into more detail with in the future let me know that too and that is all from me today guys thank you so much for watching it is me jack and i'll talk to you guys in a bit i'm out